the ice sheets are the slowest responding components of the climate system. They are, if you like, the kind of super tankers of the climate system. Once you, you send them in a certain direction, they're going to carry on in that direction for, for centuries. Uh, because you know their their response time to external forcing is is re relatively long. They respond more slowly than the oceans, the atmosphere, anything else. Um, there are parts around the periphery of the ice sheets where they can respond qu quite quickly, but the the whole system, um, you know, the whole of the Antarctic ice sheet, it's a huge continent. It's one and a half times larger than Australia. You know that that responds slowly, and so one of the challenges for us is that our observational record of what what has happened to the ice sheets is rather short. We can look at paleoclimate data, so we can try and infer what the ice sheets did in the past based on um, paleoproxies for sea level rise over the last, you know, let's say 100,000 years or something like that. Um, but but that, that's a very imprecise measure, it's an indirect measure of how the ice sheets are responding to external force in climate change. And so our satellite record of um, a high precision, high accuracy satellite record is only about 30 years long. And that's not really sufficient to tell us um, how they might respond on a centennial timescale or something like that. And so there, and, and, and the other problem is that, or challenge for the community is that there are um, non-linear, highly non-linear responses of ice sheets to external forcing. So we might just nudge them a little bit and we might see quite a large response um, over decades to centuries. And um, identifying those, those transitions in state from, from you know, one state to another is, is, is quite difficult in um, climate modeling in general. You know, when you have um, um, what's called hysteresis in the system. 